Hi, I'm Jim from UAV America. We get a lot of calls from people who have no idea what to order for themselves. They'll either call up and say, yeah, I want to get an octocopter or I want to get a hexacopter or I want to get a quadcopter, whatever. Um, probably in 90% of the cases, this little guy right here, which is the Phantom, is probably going to meet most people's needs. Um, it's a great little machine. It's uh, competitively priced. You know, for a thousand bucks, you get the camera, you get the multi-rotor and the whole nine yards. But before I start to get into the specifics of uh, which multi-rotor you want to buy, uh, the first thing you want to ask yourself is, what am I planning on doing with the multi-rotor that I need it? In most cases, uh, you want to work backwards from the application that you're going to be doing along with the type of camera that you're going to have to use for that application. Now, in some applications, obviously, you're not even using a camera. You're using a sensor like a like a FLIR or a Tetracam or, or some other uh, camera like that. But for most, uh, let me just reach over here. Uh, for most of you, you're gonna be using something like this, which is, in this case, it's a uh, Hero 3, you know, a Hero 3, Hero 4 GoPro. Uh, you might wanna use a point and shoot, uh, an X7 or an X5. These are all different varieties, or you might even have a 5D or a, um, I think this one's a, T, a T2i, but uh, these are getting pretty heavy, so obviously you're going to need a different kind of multi-rotor for something like that. Uh, first thing to do is to figure out which camera you're going to want, and then you're going to want to match up the multi-rotor to the camera itself. Um, something to keep in mind is that a quadcopter has four rotors. If one rotor goes out for any reason, you bump into a tree or something and break a prop, you're pretty much out of luck and uh, you're going to crash. Uh, if you need a certain level of redundancy, meaning that if you lose a motor, a prop breaks in midair for whatever reason, a crash or it just falls apart or something because it was over tightened, uh, the octocopter and the hexacopter are going to give you the best redundancy. Obviously, the octo is going to give you a little bit more redundancy than the hex. Um, Think about that because if you're going to be flying with an expensive camera, you know, whether that's a 5D or, a, or a, uh, some other DSLR, if you're going to fly with a RED or something like that, you're going to want something that's really, really dependable and reliable. Um, so that you want to keep in mind. Uh, the other thing, and Matt wrote down all these weights for me for these different cameras. He went and weighed them the other day. Um, now, the weights are important because when you're looking at the specs on different multi-rotors, you're going to want to um, try to match up the camera that you have with what it says the payload capability is. Now, you have to be careful because sometimes these uh, payload capabilities are with or without battery weight or with or without a gimbal weight. So try to figure out what the actual payload beyond the weight of the battery and the weight of the gimbal and the weight of the multi-rotor is. Uh, now, for example, this, our little uh, Hero 3 Plus weighs 70 grams, not much. It'll fly on, uh, this is a, um, <clears throat> this is a uh, Phantom Plus uh, Vision, which comes with its own camera, but there's also a Phantom 2, and that one will handle a GoPro without any problem at all. Uh, in fact, it's designed for the GoPro. Um, we have the uh, S100 type camera, which is a point and shoot, which a lot of people use for mapping. Uh, that camera weighs about 190 grams. Um, again, pretty lightweight. Um, most anything is gonna handle this, but not a Phantom. Uh, the next five, which I have over here. The next five is, uh, weighs about 385 grams, and the next seven is, uh, 475 grams. It's just something to keep in mind. Uh, in our case, this is a, again, this is the T2i. It's not a 5D. This one is 1,230 grams, so it's getting pretty heavy there. Um, for those of you who have trouble getting uh, grams to pounds and all that, uh, I believe 1,000 grams is 2.2 pounds. Okay, uh, so you, this is more than two pounds. Um, getting pretty heavy. And when you add a gimbal and everything else, that thing is major. Uh, the GH4, which I don't have one here right now, is runs at 690 grams. And the uh, Canon uh, 5D 
uh, runs with different lenses. He's got different uh, weights on here. 1141 yeah, grams. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then we don't have the specs on the red right here. So um, go for it. Uh, so what are, which one is right for you? Well, it's real simple in a way. If you know you're going to be flying either with a GoPro or, a, uh, or you don't want to buy a GoPro, you want to buy something totally complete, and uh, you know you're a hobbyist for the most part, uh, this Phantom is going to meet your needs. Um, this is also great for things like uh, uh, real estate shooting and, uh, uh, well, that's about really about it, I guess, because this, this, these lenses on these GoPros and on the um, DJI camera uh, distort the picture pretty pretty badly actually now there is programs software programs that will straighten that back out for you so if you can live with that uh, restriction these are great great machines um, if you want to move up a notch you know you could go something like this this is a quad that we make here um, this one here has a different flight controller in it um, we use a 3dr's uh, pixhawk for this guy um, and we put a tarot gimbal on it for, mo for the most part uh, we can also put a, um, a different gimbal on it to handle a heavier camera. This uh, can handle quite a bit of weight. If you want to go with uh, something like the point and shoot, like the S100, um, let me put it around this way so it looks prettier. Uh, so these two things would go together real well. Um, let's say an S100 and in, in this uh, Tarot. It'll also handle a GoPro. It'll handle a Fleur. It'll handle uh, up to about uh, 800 grams, I think, without any problem at all. It also has uh, retractable landing gear, which if you wanted to use a, you know, a three-axis gimbal, it, it doesn't get in the way of uh, when, you're, when you're panning. Um, the next one would be something like the 3DR X8 Plus. Plus, thank you. Um, now, the X8 Plus is uh, highly redundant because now we've got eight motors on this thing. Got two on each arm, up and down, it's coaxial. Uh, it's got the 3DR uh, Pixhawk flight controller on it. Now I keep talking about these flight controllers and for some of you, you probably don't know the difference between a NASA and a Pixhawk and I probably should take just a second to explain that. Um, DJI makes a uh, number of different flight controllers. They make uh, a NASA and they make a, um, a uh, a2 flight controller and they also make a, a Wukong. Um, three different flight controllers for three different purposes. For the most part they use the NASA for hobbyists um, or higher level uh, or I should say uh, real estate and things like that for photography. Um, Phantom, yeah the Phantom it has it comes equipped with a NASA. Um, the A2 and the uh, Wukong are both offer more waypoints uh, and a little bit more sophistication in the uh, GPS and, and uh, other options, uh, ground stations and things like that. Uh, 3DR, 3D Robotics out of San Diego, makes the Pixhawk and it's part of, a, uh, of an open source uh, project that was started by, I believe, Arducopter or Arduplane. What's the name of the... Uh, it's the it's APM is the name of the APM project. APM is the project? Okay. APM copter or plane or whatever. Okay. In any case, uh, this is a really powerful flight controller. It has uh, a ton of features on it, but you do have to be a little more sophisticated in, in getting it set up properly uh, for both the machine and for uh, flying. Um, but there's a program called the Mission Planner that we use for, or that 3DR uses, to set up your missions, and uh, it's fully uh, capable of uh, autonomous takeoff, landings, and flight plan itself. Uh, great, great flight controller. Uh, we've had uh, really good luck with these things. Um, also comes with a telemetry, telemetry radio. It's capable of carrying about 800 grams, uh, maybe 1,000 grams. Um, we mount a, a, a gimbal on here, or you can mount a gimbal yourself. Um, so a good mapping machine for the S100, or you can put a GoPro on here and, and do photography with it. Uh, we use this S100 for our own mapping. Um, it's actually an old camera that they stopped making, but it's nice because it has a built-in GPS in it, 
and uh, gives you that second level of uh, GPS. You can also hook uh, your camera through the um, Pixhawk, I believe, and do your uh, GPS coordinates that way. All right, now we're moving up into cameras like the uh, Next 5 and the Next 7. Uh, these cameras are, you know, getting a little bit heavier. I believe I said the uh, Next 5 was 385 and the Next 7 is 475 grams. So in theory, these things would work on some of these other multi-rotors I showed you. But by the time you get the batteries and the, and the uh, gimbals and all on those other machines, there's not a whole lot left over. So you want to make sure that you're flying with plenty of what we call overhead, meaning that you've got plenty of power uh, to go beyond any of the payloads that you're going to try to carry. Now this is a, a really nice machine here. This is a um, this is called an Aeronavix uh, XM6, and uh, this guy is a uh, is quite capable. Uh, you can see the landing gear on this one is kind of large. Um, this guy will handle, uh, I think, anything up to, so up to GH4 or less. Um, you got the redundancy for the, with the six, six uh, arms and six motors. And uh, this guy is a very serious um, machine. It's uh, probably got some of the best video that we've seen. It's got flight times of a half an hour. And uh, we, uh, we equip these things usually with a... Um, a2 flight controller from DJI, but we'll also sometimes put a, um, a Pixhawk on these depending on whether it's going to be used for mapping or whether it's going to be used for photography. Um, and the reason why you don't see gimbals on these things right now is because when we find people order these uh, different multi-rotors, everybody seems to be running something different and has different requirements. So rather than committing a particular machine to a particular gimbal, we usually wait until uh, the orders come in and we try to match the right gimbal for the camera and the machine that the people are, are ordering. So, um, the next machine that we wanted to show you was this uh, S900 from DJI. And it's the newest uh, or one of the newer products they've come out with. Now they haven't Inspire one, but we just sold the one that we had sitting here. So I can't show that to you today. Um, but this S900 is, is, a, is a great little machine. Um, it's easy to store. Whoops, I guess you can't see that, can you? Um, the arms, just to show you, the arms fold go, go down. down. Yeah, go ahead and yeah. pan down on it. Yeah. Um, anyhow, yeah, these arms, uh, you know, in, in, in storage are down, and then you just uh, pop them up and, and uh, just move them up like that, and the, the whole thing just goes together. You just got to remember which way to turn those. Uh, we've got a... Uh, a gimbal on this one it looks like it's a gimbal for what is this one for Matt? this is for an x7 okay um, <coughs> this is a great machine uh, it's probably the best uh, best priced hex on the market right now uh, it's extremely competitively priced it's uh, I believe that DJI sells this as a kit um, for about 3,800 bucks, and that includes the A2 flight controller and the uh, gimbal airframe, the whole nine yards. Okay, so that's all, basically as you see it, is, is uh, how it comes for $3,800, which really, it can't be beat. Um, and this is a great machine. It's, it's solid, takes great video. Um, these uh, gimbals, you can't beat. This, these uh, Zenmuse gimbals from DJI, are really, really nice uh, gimbals. The only thing that uh, some customers find a bit of a pain on these gimbals are that you have to dedicate the gimbal to a particular camera. So if you're gonna be flying with a GH4 one day and, um, and then you're gonna fly with uh, a GoPro or something the next day, you have to use two separate gimbals. Um, the uh, gimbals are dedicated. And the reason why they do that is because the gimbals themselves uh, would require balancing and tuning, you know, uh, kind of significant tuning um, if you change the cameras, the weight and balance of, of, of the uh, gimbal itself. So everything there requires, um, you know, a lot, a, a lot of tinkering. And uh, it, it's tough to get those things to work properly using uh, 
the adjustment. So they have dedicated it. Now we are, we'll be doing another video on gimbals uh, shortly, so we won't get into a lot of detail on that. But basically, when you choose a gimbal, you can choose to have uh, a single access gimbal, which is usually going to be a, a tilt. Uh, you can have a two access gimbal, which tends to be tilt and a roll. Or you can have a three access gimbal, which again is tilt, roll, and pan. And uh, there's a reason why you need all three of those for some situations, but a lot of other situations. You might only need one access or even no access at all and just hard mount a camera uh, for things like mapping. Um, in any case, if you're planning on using a GoPro, um, Phantom is a great choice or buying a Phantom with the uh, built-in um, camera that it comes with on the Phantom Vision. Uh, you can also use a, uh, a GoPro or a point-and-shoot if you go with uh, the UAVA quad. Uh, or the uh, 3DR X8. They'll take uh, a lot more cameras than, than the uh, Phantom, which is built just for the GoPro or for the built-in camera. Uh, if you move up into a Hex, uh, they're ideal for Blackmagic pocket cameras, uh, the Sony Nex 5 or Nex 7, uh, or the Panasonic GH3, GH4. And again, these are uh, the UAVA MR6A, which is really an aeronavics frame that we build out, uh, or the DJI S900, which is a great little machine as well. And then finally, we'll just go over this. The, uh, if you're using a larger camera, like the full-size Blackmagic or a RED or a Canon 5D, you really have to move up to an Octo in order to uh, handle the weight. Um, we would recommend the S1000 for the 5D, um, and uh, the sky jib we would recommend for uh, any of these cameras. Um, it'll handle 5D, the red, or the black magic with the sky jib. And that's the sky jib flat, which is the eight arms, or the sky jib coaxial, which is the one that you see here, which has the um, motors up and down on each of the four arms. We are going to close this one out for today, and uh, we will pick it up again uh, when we talk about gimbals. Uh, thanks for watching.